much for having me on. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, it's such a pleasure. And um, we're going to be talking about the toxicity of electromagnetic pollution and how do we support our bodies in detoxing from that. And that's a huge topic. Uh, uh, and to start off with, let's see, Marzi's supposed to come in here um, and get me on Facebook here so I can see who's here today, but I think she's giving Gio a bath at the moment. So let's see what I can do here uh, to find this. Um, because uh, Wendy, I, I always like to say hello to the people who show up first and when, when they sign in and they tell us where they're from, it's always fun, but I can't find it. So I'll catch up to you guys in a couple of minutes when Marcy does come in. So in my book, You Can Fix Your Brain, I talk about the pyramid of health and that we, we, we look at health from a pyramid and people think, oh, pyramid has three sides. And no, no, it has four. There's a base and then there are three sides going up. And the base is structure and that's the home of chiropractic and massage and exercise and bones and muscles. One side of the pyramid is biochemistry, what we eat, drink, breathe, the vitamins we take, the medications we take, and that's where most of us focus almost all of our attention. One side is the emotional or spiritual, and the fourth side is the electromagnetic. And any one of those sides of the pyramid may be the primary contributor to whatever dis-ease or disease you've got. So that we have to look from a big picture perspective when someone comes to us and says, I've got this symptom, whatever this symptom is, or that one, or this diagnosis, or that diagnosis. It really doesn't matter what the diagnosis is in how you start to dial down, where is it coming from? You have to look at all four sides. And today we're going to talk about the newest of those sides of the pyramid. You know, Wendy, there's a really cool story that um, um, I like to share. Uh, I had the privilege, one of my mentors was Dr. George Goodhart, the founder of Applied Kinesiology. That's all the muscle testing that people do. We called him the great wazoo. The guy was just unbelievable in how he could deduce where problems were in the body. And I had the privilege of having dinner with him um, one time a couple years before he passed. And uh, in the world of applied kinesiology, they talk about the uh, triangle of health, which was structure, biochemistry, and emotions or, or spirit. And I had dinner with them and I said, you know, Dr. Goodhart, I don't think it's a triangle. I think it's a pyramid. And he looked at me and said, well, why do you say that, Tom? And I said, well, I think there's a fourth side to all of this. And that we that was not around in the 1970s and 1980s. A little bit we talked about it, but not with the same intensity or focus that we do today. And that's the electromagnetic and the pollution of the electromagnetic side. And he looked at me with this like pirate look, you like this kind of thing. <laughs> and he said, well, Tom, you're actually correct, but I'm not giving up the pin because in applied kinesiology, if you got your diplomate board certified in applied kinesiology, you got a diamond pin, which was a triangle for the three sides of, <laughs> of health. But it's not a triangle anymore, right? It's a pyramid. And so we laughed about that. That's a pleasant little background story. Uh, but it validated for me, of course, and I already knew, but it validated that it's just as important as biochemistry. So can can we begin? Um, you're, you're the go-to expert on detoxing in general and about electromagnetics. Um, what have you seen of how the impact of electromagnetic pollution can affect somebody? Well, you know, there's about 20% of the population that are called HSPs or highly sensitive persons. For, so for that population, they're gonna be much more sensitive to, you know, sources of electromagnetic fields in our environment, like their cell phone, Wi-Fi, internet, computers, 
uh, their electric smart meters that measure their electricity, and even electrical appliances, microwaves, things like that, power lines that could be in their backyard or on their street, cell phone towers. There's a lot of sources, uh, and there's more and more growing every day, not including the satellites, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, so there's, there's all these different sources, and they emit these non-native electrical fields that affect our body and, and our body has this you know energy field around it heart math has shown and you know, i'm going excuse me i yes. just want to pause for a minute because you said yeah. something that the word is a new word for a lot of people and that is non-native yes what do you mean by that yes so i was going to just like, like give us some background like we have this energy field we have our native frequencies like our heartbeat our heart field goes out 10 feet in diameter around us. And then we also have our brain waves and our body communicates in this energy field. That's the primary means of communication. Although we have physical communications like neurotransmitters and hormones and things like that. Um, but all these trillions of things that happen every second in our body cannot be accounted for with physical reactions and biochemical reactions. And so when we have these not these very kind of harsh non-native frequencies like 5G or our cell phone rings that emits a signal and, and other forms of, of EMF, these frequencies interfere in our body's communication system, interrupting our body's ability to communicate. And that's where you see in the research we have this breakdown of physical functioning because our physical body takes direction and instruction from the instructions in our energy field. Uh, Let's the, the, talk about yeah. that energy field, because you said something that I didn't know, um, and I'm sure most of our listeners don't know. You said that the electrical field of the heart goes out 10 feet. What, what do you mean by that? Yes, so our, our heart has the strongest field in our body. And so HeartMath, which is a research institute, they've done decades of research on this. They've shown that the heart emits this electrical field 10 feet in diameter all around the body. This is and measurable? Yeah, oh yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, they, and there's also other really interesting research where they've shown, because you know, this is our heart is our center. Actually, the, the information is, and instructions for our body priorly, primarily come from our heart. We think it's the brain, but it's actually the heart. And there's even studies that show when there are very devastating effects on the planet, um, like when the Twin Towers came down on September 11th or Princess Diana died, there was this huge surge of uh, electrical fields on the planet. And it was all of our hearts um, kind of, you know, this grief at the same time. Then they could measure this surge in electricity. That, that was happening when these devastating events happened. But so that's the power of our heart uh, to be able to emit this electrical field. And so there's lots of research on heartmath.com if anyone wants to research that further. So I'm, I'm gonna back us up a little bit and share some experiences uh, with Dr. Goodhart and my training back in the 70s and 80s. And I had a number of patients who we did everything right that we knew to do, but their brain symptoms, one was migraines, another was seizures. We just, you know, we were helping, but they weren't getting quite to where they wanted to be. And one of the kind of peripheral things that, well, when nothing else works, think about this kind of thing, was what we now know as EMFs. But back in the 70s and 80s, there wasn't much discussion about that. And we talked about, Dr. Goodhart talked about alarm clocks on the nightstand next to your head and that many of these alarm clocks, the wiring in them wasn't so good, you know, and there might be some um, static wiring and there's these electrical currents that are being sh shooting out. You can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't hear it. And I, I had a couple of experiences where the patient's migraines went away completely when we put the alarm clock on the other side of the room. And, uh, and same with seizures. The seizure stopped in one day uh, for a child when we put the alarm clock on the other side of the room. This was like a nine or 10 year old child. Uh, and it just had to be far enough away. After that, I started 
giving patients a electromagnetic frequency meter to take home for a night. And I, I'd have, have them scan their whole house, every wall, because mice might chew on wiring or something. Or if there's a television on the other side of the bedroom wall, turn the television on and go in your bedroom and see if there's any leakage coming out. That was the early days of my exposure to this world that you're talking about. And I, I wanted to bring that up because many people, it's, it's Greek to them to hear what there's, there's wave patterns coming from my heart that go out 10 feet. You know, and they, they've never heard things like this before. Can, can you give us a couple of um, hands-on experiences from your world and people that you've talked to that have helped to validate you learning more about this topic? Yeah, so there's there's lots of research on, say, PubMed. You can search for bioenergetics. You can search for EMF. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of research. This is a very burgeoning field of investigation. Um, there's great books out there like The Field by Lynn McTaggart. Uh, there are other books um, like um, uh, The Human Body Field by Dr. Peter Fraser and Harry Massey. Um, that's not the exact title, but if you took it in Body Field and Harry Massey, you'll, you'll find that. Isn't it um, the, the, the Body Electric? It's not the body electric. I just I forget offhand what the name of the book is. Um, but there there's lot lots and lots of information. There are so many different books on uh, the body's energy field or bioenergetics that you can search on Amazon. Um, lots and lots of research out there. On so this. for those out there who are watching, if this is new to you, if this concept, I just want to validate what Wendy is saying. You know that I've had so many patients where that side of the pyramid of health had to be addressed to get the final icing on the cake of getting their symptoms out of there, you know, put, putting their dis-ease or their disease into remission. Uh, ir irregular heartbeats. Yes. So, um, I've had two, three that I can think of offhand patients where they never had an irregular heartbeat until there was a smart meter installed on the outside of their house. And after that, it began for them. So I said, get the smart meter off of there or Go stay at a hotel for a week uh, and turn the Wi-Fi off in that room so you're not being bombarded, right? And just see if your irregular heartbeat stops. And it did. And so they got the smart meter out and it went away. So for those people that aren't that familiar with this topic we're talking about today, it's very real. It's just as potent as if you're um, eating ding-dongs and ho-hos and drinking Coca-Cola every day, what that does to your body. If you've got electromagnetic pollution and you're one of those 20% that Wendy is talking about that are sensitive to this, um, highly sensitive, this may be the missing link for you. Yeah, and it's, you know, I kind of doing this work and wanting to get this message out because I think a lot of people are chasing symptoms and going to their, you know, conventional medical doctor for anxiety or depression or sleep issues or heart palpitations or tachycardia or uh, a number of uh, immune issues, uh, even leukemias and, and things like that, that are the underlying root cause is exposure to these non-native frequencies, uh, these, uh, you know, bad electromagnetic fields. Not all EMFs are bad. You know, the earth emits at Schumann's resonance at 7.83 megahertz. Like that's a, a good healing frequency that we need. There's, you know, essential oils have frequencies in them. That's part of their healing capacity. But these, these really harsh frequencies that our bodies uh, are not used to, that interfere on our heartbeat, that interfere in our brain waves and our ability to relax and sleep and restore, therein lies the problem and, and conventional medical doctors are not looking at this at all and so if, if anyone out there has mystery illness or uh they are have chronic fatigue or me or any kind of other you know mystery illness that can't really be addressed you want to be looking at emf as a potential source and removing yourself from emf and seeing what symptoms resolve amen to that that's it, it, it's a critically important topic and I've demonstrated that I've, I have a youthful spirit because I figured out how to open up Facebook here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let me give a shout out here to um, uh, 
Mindy House, hello from Kentucky, and Maggie's in Cleveland. Um, uh, let's see. Gwen Jones is in New Zealand. Hey, Gwen, and it's noon. It's noon on Wednesday in Auckland. Well, thank you so much. So thank you, Joan, uh, I, or uh, Gwen. I'll try to remember that for next week. Uchiha's in Tucson. Louise said, what happened? Lost connection. Well, I hope you're back now. Uh, Maggie King says, can you please reintroduce your guest? I don't see who she is. Oh, well, of course. Wendy Myers is a friend of many years who has, well, let's talk about your story. How did you get, get into the world, Wendy? Yes, well, you know, I founded MyersDetox.com after my own kind of health struggles and, and whatnot. And I didn't have any major issues, but I did reach a point where I was just overweight and I, I couldn't lose weight and my hormones were a mess and I had low thyroid issues and I just didn't feel good. And, um, you know, and I just set out on this journey. I went on Dr. Google to try to fix my hormones and to try to just feel that, you know, get that health that I felt that I deserved. And I was working so hard on my health. You know, I was eating all organic food, making it myself. I was working out a few times a week. I was, um, you know, I was uh, just doing everything right, taking a huge bag of supplements, and I still felt like crap. A lot of the time I didn't feel like myself I didn't recognize myself in the mirror and and I just thought what exactly is it that I have to do to feel good you know because I, I was spending a lot of money and a lot of time and so um, so I, I just kept hitting upon heavy metals and chemicals and sort of researching that I'm like why didn't I why haven't I hit on this before I do so much reading but it, I didn't think that it applied to me you know, I didn't think heavy metals and chemicals applied to me because I was so healthy and doing so many healthy things. But I did some heavy metals testing, and lo and behold, I had all kinds of heavy metal toxicities. And I, it just lit a fire under me, and I, I started MyersDetox.com to teach other people what I was discovering. And that kind of led into, you know, EMF, you know, uh, working on detoxifying my environment from EMF was just like, ugh, just another thing, another rabbit hole I need to go down, more stuff I need to buy. And, uh, but it was something for me, I used to live in Los Angeles and there was this little website that you could see how many cell towers were in your area. And I had hundreds within a five mile radius of my home. And I had this huge electrical pole feeding all the electricity to all the homes on my block. And I just, at that time, I was really exhausted and not sleeping well and very stressed, and I just, uh, I couldn't figure out why. And then when I started reading more about EMF, I realized that this could potentially, you know, all this EMF could be uh, one of the underlying root causes. And lo and behold, I'm, I live in Mexico now, and I assure you, I feel much, much better living here. They just don't have, um, you know, they don't have 5G here. They don't have as much, uh, you know, infrastructure built out for all the cell phone towers and whatnot. So for me, I, I just, my body came here and I just, I just, I had this huge stress relief oh, coming wow. here. And, and I think that's due in part to the reduced amount of EMF I was exposed to. You know, I, I talked about in the early 80s, we, we opened our practice on Valentine's Day in 1981. You know, I'm dating myself, but but back then, there were, oh, pause, here it comes, <laughs> here he comes, there we go, everybody, oh. and there he is, yes, what a cutie that. pie, oh my yeah. gosh, yes, hi little boy, yes, say hi everyone, oh, nice, <laughs> oh sweet, so, Back, back in 1981, I started reading studies and looking for them. And if you look, you could find them. Uh, children have a much higher incidence of leukemia if they live within a quarter mile of high power tension wires. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's no wires here. Yes. <laughs> so um, that started to expose me to this world of being saturated by too much electrical interference and what it might do and validates what you're saying and and how many towers you had around you in LA and so and there there's this new topic I thought I'd ask you and we didn't talk about this ahead of time but I, what about all the 5g satellites that are now covering the planet can can you talk a little about that and how that might be affecting us 
Yeah, so here's the thing. There's a lot of, uh, like Los Angeles, a lot of infrastructure built out, cell phone towers and the like. Um, but there's a lot of countries in the world, developing countries, that don't have the money nor the infrastructure built out. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, billionaires that are looking to own all the data uh, and, you know, do, I don't want to say do surveillance, but that, that is part of it. But, you know, uh, there's certain people like Elon Musk owns a company called Starlink, and they're sending up a couple hundred satellites a month into our atmosphere. And they actually started testing their system last August. And so there's about 40 relay centers in the United States alone um, where they're doing, doing some testing. And uh, so some people, I'm sure there was a lot of people having more and more trouble sleeping or anxiety or depression when that testing began. And then there are also uh, people like Bill Gates who in invested in China's SoftBank. Those are video surveillance 5G satellites that are coming out. And of course, Jeff Bezos uh, wants to get in the game. So he's got uh, a company and then there's OneWeb and there's a couple other companies. But in the next few years, there are slated to be 100,000 satellites in our environment and circling the globe, providing internet access and you know uh, wireless internet to anyone that, that has a cell phone anywhere on the planet. And so, uh, and it's, it's scary, it's, it's frightening to see um, what's going to happen when that's in full effect. And not only for humans, but for planetary life as well, the birds and the bees and, and whatnot, because they're, they, you know, bees navigate um, through their electric fields, you right. know, and as, as, you know, sonar with bats, I mean, that's, that's all electric fields that are being sent out and then sent back. Um, you know, whales beach themselves when they're like the submarines that send out the sonar signal. That's why you see all these masses of whales beach themselves because the, it just it just scrambles their, their brain signals and that they're disorientated and beach themselves, you know. So there's going to be a lot of, of issues surrounding that. So that's why I think it's more important than ever for people to start thinking about how EMFs impact their health and what they can do to protect themselves from this. What are some of the signs or symptoms that might suggest to someone, I better look at EMFs as one of the sides of the pyramid that might be affecting me? Yes, fatigue is common. Uh, people can have high blood sugar and be overweight. Dr. Jack Cruz talks about this, you know, because EMFs can affect your cell glucose metabolism. So you'll have trouble getting a uh, blood sugar or glucose into your cells. And so people that are overweight, I do think it's one of the reasons that, that we do have an obesity epidemic. It's not the only reason, but the EMF is contributing to that. Um, that we also have uh, brain fog, trouble sleeping, you know, uh, confusion. People can um, have, um, you know, uh, issues with uh, anxiety, depression, just general malaise. Um, immunity issues, absolutely, um, because there's just there's lots of research on how EMFs disrupt immunity. Um, people can have tumors. Like, you know, there's lots of research that shows your cell phone um, kind of heating up one side of your brain or use of your cell phone. People have a much higher incident, up to 25 times higher incidence of tumors on that side of the head, uh, be they benign or malignant. And like you mentioned, there's a, uh, increased rates of childhood leukemia. Um, you know, there's just a lot of different devastating health effects. And the list is very, very long. I've just kind of barely touched on it. There's lot of, lots of research, lots of meta-analyses, lots of great books on this. Uh, Dr. Mercola wrote a book called emf -ed. Anne Louise Gittemann has written a book. Uh, my good friend Lloyd Burrell has a couple of books uh, with all the research, uh, Nick Pinot. The non tinfoil Guide to EMFs has written a fantastic book um, on the subject as well that has all the research and data to support this. That's I'm really saying. great. Great to know about those resources. We had most of those people you've mentioned on Facebook Live in the last couple of years and uh, talking to some degree about uh, some of that. Uh, the points that you mentioned that I think can hit home for a lot of people, fatigue, confusion, um, brain fog, uh, like whales landing up on a beach. If you think about uh, their disorientation, 
our brain fog is a level of disorientation for us and we aren't going to end up on a beach unless we're really smart and we end up on a beach in Mexico or a beach in Costa Rica, right? And, and get away from as much of that as possible. Uh, but those are some of the symptoms that might suggest, I should take a look at this a little bit more. And how can they identify, how can people identify or confirm that EMF uh, pollution might be impacting on them? Are there, are there specific tests that they can do or um, what, what do you recommend for that? Well, there's not a lot of like really direct tests that are really practical, but you can do what's called an HRV test or a heart rate variability test. Anyone of you guys that own an aura ring, um, that's an, uh, you know, not the most accurate way in the world, but that is certainly one way to at least get a general idea of what your heart rate variability is. And it's one of the best tests for stress out there. And um, lots of research to support that, that it's a great test for stress. And it can tell you how much stress that you're under. There's not a lot of great tests that directly test your body for EMF, but you can test your environment see with a tri-field meter. There's actually much better meters out there, but that's a very easy, practical, inexpensive one to use. And it's good to test your environment that you're in. Because I think people don't realize, like, say their television set is on, there's a little red light for the, uh, the remote. That's on all night long. That's a little Bluetooth signal coming to your body. And then you have like maybe your alarm clock, and then you've got other electronics, you've got your hair dryer plugged in all the time. Then you've got the wires in the walls, and you've got your smart meter over here, you got your Wi-Fi on all night, then you've got all your 50 neighbors' Wi-Fi meters. All this stuff adds up. It's like really cumulative. And so that can be measured. Um, the only way you can measure the 5G satellites is with a $20,000 building biologist type meter. That's not going to be detected with a tri-field meter. And that's kind of the, you know, might give people a, a false sense of security if they tested their whole home and mitigated their whole home of, of EMF. Uh, their, their work isn't 100% done yet. But, um, but just for your own body, you can do HRV testing and that's a good sign of stress. The, the lower the HRV, the better. The heart rate variability is the amount of time in between heartbeats. So the faster your heartbeat, you're gonna have less time in between, so you're gonna have a higher heart rate variability. But you want a low heart rate variability, and that's a, a better indicator of mortality than diabetes, cancer, smoking, poor diet, high cholesterol, everything. It's one of the best markers of uh, longevity and, or mortality um, than any marker out there. And there's lots of research to support that as well. Yes, there is. You know, um, earlier this year, we hosted a summit, the Food and Autoimmunity Summit. And one of the interviews I did for that was Roland McCready, who is the chief science officer for HeartMath. Mm -hmm. And when you hear uh, the geek talking uh, in a really easy to follow, understand way, what some of the science is, it drops your jaw. And you understand how important it is to use your heart rate as a monitor of how's my body handling stress right now? So that when you're dealing with your diet and you're dealing with your structure and you're dealing with your emotions and you say, you know what, I'm doing pretty well there but your heart rate variability is still off the charts, out of balance, it's likely electromagnetic. And when you turn off the, uh, well, when you unplug your um, uh, microwave, your television, your Siri, when you unplug all of that so, and unplug your internet uh, at night, your wireless, when, when you go to sleep, you and you find that your heart rate variability is much more consistent until you plug everything back in in the morning, then that's a pretty good suggestion. Well, I'm, okay, I'm one of those, that 20% that Wendy talked about that um, in, I'm going to do well to really look at this a little bit more. So let's talk about how people can protect themselves from some of these um, uh, assaults that they can't feel and they can't see. Yes. So there's very simple things that you can do. You can take your cell phone and keep it an arm's length away from your body. And so that's a, cause you know, 
the closer an EMF source is to your body, the more it's going to negatively impact you. So distance is key. That will lessen the negative impact. So just have your phone a foot away from you. It doesn't need to be on your body, in your pocket, in your purse, right on your body. You can also put it in airplane mode. You don't need to get texts every five minutes. And a lot of people, want, they want that little dopamine hit all the time for getting texts and Tinder and Instagram and all these apps that we have, we're getting attention from. Um, but also you want to, especially at night, you don't want to charge your phone near your head. Okay. Because that is giving, giving you some dirty electricity from the, uh, the phone being charged. You also want to make sure the it's an airplane plane mode and the Bluetooth is off, preferably charged in another room if possible, or at least across the room, you know? So those are very simple things that you can do. Um, you also want to turn off your Wi-Fi router at night. And so you don't, you're not using it. You know, you, and a lot of people, you can also hard, you can hardwire your router, your computer to your router. That's ideal. But a lot of people just, they have a lot of members in their household. A lot of kids are going to lose their mind if they can't use their iPad, you know, in the living room. So a lot of people, they have Wi-Fi on. So it's best if you could put, put it on a timer so it just turns off when you're not using it, at least, you know, during the, the odd hours. There's also ones that you can buy forget the name of them, but there's ones that you can buy that actually turn off when they're not in use. So they're just not emitting a signal when they're in use. Um, there's other things that you can do. You can get um, EMF sheets or grounding sheets that have silver and copper threads in them that at least can protect your body from any EMF you may be encountering, you know, while you're sleeping. You can even get a Faraday cage where it's almost like a mosquito net that has these silver and copper threads in them that just create this cocoon for your body so that you can just, you know, take a deep breath and, you know, restore and rejuvenate at night, at least give your body a break during that important rejuvenative uh, time. Um, you can also get a whole house EMF protector. So there, I really like the one by Blue Shield. It's blueshield.ca.com. That's a fantastic one. I have the cube. And I put that in my home and the one that I have, it's the ultras, it's about $1,200, but they have ones that are about $600 and that will protect about a 2,500 square foot home or, you know, uh, you know so yeah, it's, that's a really good one. And it, it combats EMF in about three different ways. And, um, but a, a lot of people will create this cocoon in their home, but then what happens when they leave their home, when they go to their office or go to, they go to the grocery store? There's not a, lo a lot of things you can do that are like there's little stickers. I like Aries Tech stickers to put on your phone. Um, this Trivortex disc, this is Trivortex.com. This is amazing. This will also divert all the EMFs and you can just uh, stick it on your phone as well. Uh, this is really great and put it on your, I put one on my computer when I'm using it and that'll mitigate some of the EMFs as well. Um, but another really good thing you can do is uh, there's something I have here called the Harmony Pendant. The Harmony Pendant is also a very, very easy way to not, it doesn't have 100% EMF mitigation. Yeah, Tom, you have yours. Uh, yeah. But it's, we showed in a study has a 48% a reduction in stress uh, as a result of EMFs. So it does reduce the stress in your body. Uh, when you're exposed to EMFs. We proved that in about a hundred patient study with eight different doctors. And we had fantastic doctors, Dr. Lisa Coach, Dr. Michael Rankin, junior and senior. Um, we had Dr. Lisa Fortin, who's a Harvard trained medical doctor. A lot of really, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Brian Nolan, who's a world renowned expert on uh, nitric oxide. So a lot of really uh, amazing people on the study. Um, but. So this can help also just generally reduce stress in your body. And we showed that people also had better sleep. We have thousands of reviews on uh, the, you can click the link. Uh, I think you guys have here, but on that website, there's thousands of reviews that you can read of people talking about better sleep, less pain, their heart palpitations have gone away, reduced stress. They can sit in front of their computer longer. They just feel better generally. They have a better mood, better energy, just all kinds of reviews uh, of, of uh, all natures. Um, but so this is something that, that can, you can wear all the time. It goes with you everywhere you are, but it's still, like I said, it's not a hundred percent. So you still need to do mitigation in your environment. You still need to create, uh, make your bedroom like a little cocoon. And you can do things like, um, 
you know, like you can uh, put graphite, graphite paint on your walls and that will block all the EMF. There's other things like, like film that you can, EMF protective film that you can put on your windows and your sliding glass doors to really create this cocoon. I can't stress that enough. Uh, that's so, so important to just get, give your body a rest. Because even even now going out into the country, a lot of people, HSPs, these highly sensitive people, they'll go out into the country because they just, they can't tolerate being in cities. It's just, the energy is just too intense for them. Um, but because of the advent of these 5G satellites that are going into our environment more and more, and as testing ramps up, you know, the country isn't going to be, you know, a, as a, a haven like it is right now for people that are really highly sensitive. So the pendant can help taking other mitigative factors. It's worth your time to look into this. And because there's, it's kind of a rabbit hole you have to go down, at least wearing a Harmony pendant can give you some protection to help protect your body field and the stressful effects of EMF while you're researching and finding the devices uh, that will work for you and your family. That's very comprehensive and uh, people can um, uh, watch this again and again with some notes, you know, take notes because uh, it's on Facebook and uh, you'll be able to access it um, um, in perpetuity, as far as I know, so that you can go through some of those recommendations again. For those that have problems with sleeping, as an example, um, doing a Faraday cage, which is like a mosquito net over your bed can be quite profound and impactful. It can make yeah. a difference, a substantial oh. difference. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the Faraday cages are amazing because people today have, they just, there's so many different forms of EMF. Even if you take all the steps that I, I mentioned, like you turn your Wi-Fi wi router off and now you all, if you look at, like you're looking for networks for your internet, some people have like 50 or a hundred Wi-Fi networks that and those people are not turning them off at night and, and they're they're just surrounded especially if they live in like an apartment building i had one client that was very very ill and i asked her she lived in an apartment building and i asked her where her electric meters were the electric smart meters for her apartment and i asked if there was one like in her bedroom wall perhaps just to investigate that and then she discovered that her entire wall had all of the smart meters for all of the apartments oh right on her wall and yeah. there's other people i've known that had the husband and wife they had migraines their smart meter was in the wall of their bedroom where their heads were you know um, sometimes people's ac units are emitting a lot of emf as well so you, you just have to do some investigative work but you know even if you mitigate all this stuff you know you can you may be one of those highly sensitive people and you just have to take extra precautions and really do some investigation Mindy has a question. I'm very sensitive to EMFs. I've also recovered from mold toxicity. As I understand it, mold toxicity can cause EMF sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't think it's necessarily that mold will necessarily cause EMF sensitivity. I mean, if you have heavy metals, you have a large burden on your immune system that's being caused by mold because your immune system's not kind of on high alert having to deal with this. It's just another stressor that can make you more vulnerable to other types of stressors. So it's not really the mold, it could be any infection. Um, and heavy metals can also make you kind of a lightning rod where you attract more EMFs uh, per se. Um, so, uh, but like I said, some people are just more sensitive to others. And usually the sicker someone is, um, that's usually a sign that they are more of a, like a highly sensitive person. Their genetics aren't so favorable and they may be more uh, sensitive to, to EMFs or the EMFs could be contributing to their symptoms quite a bit. Right, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a pot. It's like a soup. Our bodies are a soup and everything that goes into this soup is going to affect us and make us stronger or more vulnerable. So if you're living in a moldy environment, that's compromising your immune system already. So you're gonna be more sensitive to anything that might tax you, whether it's bacteria or EMFs or structural problems. That's why we have to deal with all of it. You know, that's why it takes time to learn how to look at all of these things. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I see Anne posted the title of the book, Decoding the Human Body Field, the new yes. science of information 
as Medicine by Harry Massey. Thank you. Yeah, that's the title I was trying to remember. Also, another good book is uh, The Biology Belief by Bruce Lipton that also talks about the, the body field as well. Carol has a question. I'm here a bit late, but want to know how to combat EMFs from them insisting on putting a smart meter on our home. I have many concerns, but one is having full body lymphatic dysfunction and wonder how they can affect lymphatic flow. Okay. Yeah, so, so how EMFs can impact lymphatic flow. Um, well, you know, you know, I don't, I've never been asked that question. I don't honestly know the answer to that. I mean, yeah, uh, the, the answer is yes. Yes, it can. Uh, the same way that EMFs can affect vascular flow, um, your blood vessels and you get cardi cardiovascular symptoms. Same can happen with your lymphatic system. And her question, uh, what I'm hearing in her question, is they're insisting on putting a smart meter on her home. Do you have any experience with dealing with electric companies that want to put a smart meter on your home? Well, if it hasn't happened yet, you can contest it. Um, but if it's already happened, usually there isn't any going back from that. So you have to, you know, this is like a tough one because, you know, there's a lot of uh, companies out there, they'll make you pay a monthly fee if you refuse the electric meter because it costs them more money to have someone come out and manually, you know, look at your electric usage. Um, so some people just, they just pay that fee or they might have to fight them in court. Uh, I've heard of a lot of people, they don't have any kind of recourse whatsoever. Like the, the electric company doesn't allow that. So you just have to find out in your area what your recourse is and what your options are. Uh, Sharon's asking, and I think we answered some of this, but in case you have anything else to add, Sharon's asking, how do we protect ourselves if our homes have Wi-Fi? Um, well, so a lot of the things that I just mentioned, um, you can turn your Wi-Fi router off at night. Um, you can wear a Harmony pendant. Um, you can create that cocoon in your bedroom, like the Faraday cage and the sheets. Uh, there's, lots of, there's lots of great websites out there that have the grounding sheets and the copper and silver threads and things like that. Lucia asks, are you familiar with the Soma Vedic? Is this device help to block Wi-Fi? Yes, so um, I, I think it, it, it's, it's somewhat helpful. I mean, I think it's a very good product. I've, I've had one for years and I put it on my, my office. Like I have it on my desk where I used to in my old home. Um, and it's a, it's a very good product. Um, and they do have a, a study to show that it does work. It does mitigate some EMFs. Um, but it's, uh, again, it's like another device that, to buy that, um, you know, that only kind of, it only protects like a small area. So it is good, but I'd almost rather someone invest in something like the Blue Shield that can protect the entire home, that can protect a much larger area, like your entire home, because there's a lot of devices to buy, okay? So there's, you know, like you want, you can do like an Aries Tech and get something for your computer and a sticker for your phone and then a, a Trivortex for this. And, you know, there's a lot of little devices that you can buy. So I try to kind of minimize the amount of things that I recommend. So I'd rather someone uh, spend the money and get a whole house meter um, for the price of, you know, one of the Somavetics can be up to six, $700. You can get a whole house protector for that. Um, so I, I don't know. I just try to minimize the amount of things people buy. You can, the Harmony pendant will protect your body. So that's really the most important thing. That's what you're trying to protect is your, your physical body. And the Harmony pendant will, you know, uh, like I said, it will mitigate the stressful effects of EMF. Um, but I, I do, like I said, I did like the, um, the Somavetic. I did like it when I was using it, but I prefer the whole house protector. Tammy says, I recently had a few x-rays and now I feel like I'm reacting to EMFs. How do I fix this? Yes, so um, so did she say she installed a whole house meter? No, nope, no, nope. she recently had a few x-rays. Oh, x-rays. Yes, well, x-rays are radiation. Those do affect your body field, absolutely. Um, and sometimes these x-rays use contrasting agents, which people don't metabolize very well. Um, so, it's one of those things, there's things you can do to reestablish your body field. There's PEMF mats. Um, there's programs like Ness Health Bioenergetics that will detect all the kind of deviations in your energy field and build your energy field back up and correct 
correct your, your energy field and reestablish you know, proper communication. Um, there, there's lots of different bioenergetic programs out there that can help to kind of you know, correct the distortions in your body field that were created by the EMF or of the X-ray radiation. Tammy, I'd also suggest uh, uh, walk barefoot in the sand if you're near a beach or go uh, walk in the woods. Uh, it's called forest bathing. Yes. And what we know about walking in the woods is that you're inhaling the oils from the trees and what's in the air, and it's very grounding. It's just, so going for walks not on concrete but on earth, and preferably not manicured and uh, pesticided earth, right? So go out in the woods, uh, go out in the fields if you can, hike on a trail. Uh, but get outside, get away from the city if you can, and help uh, allow your body to be bathed in more of Earth's grounding energy. That certainly will help. Um, one of the things that I do is I, I have a stone that's about this big and about that tall if I hold it up and about that thick. Um, so it's a big oval-shaped stone that's at my feet under my desk. I take my shoes off, you know, I don't wear my shoes in the house, and so my feet are on the stone all the time, all the time, and it's just a grounding. It helps maybe this much. I don't know how much it helps, but maybe this much. Um, I feel better when my feet are on it. I feel I'm a little more grounded, and especially if you notice a change after you had uh, radiation exposure, get grounded again. Uh, which is what you're asking, how do I deal with this? And so the concept is get grounded. Yeah, that's a, that's a much simpler solution. <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad that you brought that up because we are, you know, we're electromagnetic beings. We're supposed to have a negative charge. That's what like being grounded means. And what EMF does is it helps to make us, uh, it causes us to be more of a, have a positive charge, which is why our body doesn't work as well. It's why it causes a stress in our body and negative physical symptoms so yeah walk like you said walking on the ground burying yourself in sand uh, they that's what they used to do the sick people they take them to the beach and bury them in the sand and then put them in the water and that would help to ground them right and it helps this much but this much and this much and this much it's all base hits win the ball game you know doing doing all the little things um can help quite a bit it will will make a difference uh, we posted the link for the Harmony Pendants, and uh, uh, so people can click on the link and learn more about those. Marzi wears hers, I wear mine. Uh, when we're at home, um, someday, I don't wear them at home some days. Um, we don't have an EMF toxic environment here. But when I go out or I go into town or I just did a trip to Europe, and uh, of course, um, I never took the thing off uh, while I was traveling. Uh, so I... I like the Harmony pendant. It's, um, I probably notice a little something when I wear it, probably, but I'm not sick, you know? And so it's more of a protective shield for me. I think sometimes when I put this thing on, I'm envisioning Worf on Star Trek saying, shields! <laughs> <laughs> Come up over my body, right? So it literally does provide a shield. It literally does. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> You know, I'm consciously acknowledging that in my own way and, and hoping that it's going to help a uh, little uh, bit. But I'd, yeah. I'd recommend a independent to everyone. Yeah, and I wanted to just say one thing about HRV is people can do this test for themselves. So if they're kind of skeptical or whatnot, they can, I've heard many, many uh, practitioners have emailed me and told me that they have their aura ring where they're testing their HRV, their, you know, their heart rate variability, they're keeping a baseline, and they just check it to see if different modalities they're using improve their sleep or their HRV to see if they're working. And a lot of them have emailed me and said when they, they put on their Harmony pendant, their HRV went down markedly. And then when they took their pendant off, they noticed their HRV went up that day. Mm -hmm. And then they just noticed this by accident and then put the pendant back on, the HRV goes back down. So you can do this test for yourself and just see for yourself, the, the proof is in the pudding, 
when your HRV goes down, you're less stressed and you, you have better vagal tone, you have better vagus nerve tone, and that vagus nerve enervates every organ in your body, um, and that will dramatically help you know, your body to work even better if you have that, that lowered HRV. So like I said, it's a huge predictor of longevity and better health. So very important to be focused on your heart rate variability and doing things that lower your heart rate variability because if you are in a stress state, you can't heal. And, and that's one thing challenging. Uh, I've worked with thousands of clients and so many people come to me and they're just so stressed, but they want to get better. So I like using the Harmony Pendant to just you know, bring their stress levels down a little bit so that we can get to the other things that need to be addressed and they, they, it just potentiates uh, anything that I'm trying to do with them, it potentiates other therapies uh, and can make them more efficacious when they're wearing a harmony pendant. So I just uh, beg anyone to do, do that experiment for themselves. And also if people, they get a pendant and they're not happy with it, we have a 100% money back guarantee at any time. So we stand behind our product. Uh, I, um, I highly endorse these pendants as maybe it's not a base hit, maybe it's a double. I take it you're a baseball fan. <laughs> I am, you know, born, <laughs> born and raised in Detroit, so the Tigers uh, have a place in history for me. And <laughs> um, there's a question: Are all viruses proteins, and can you detox them? Yes. Well, gosh, you know, I don't really have the answer to that question, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, neither yeah. do I. Uh, um, I don't know that you can detox from viruses, but you can inhibit them from propagating in your body. They don't reproduce, they shed like um, uh, 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 dandruff. They, they shed, but they only shed inside your cells. And so if you can inhibit the virus from getting inside your cells, it might be in the bloodstream, but if it doesn't get in the cells, it's not going to shed. And so how do you do that? Well, there are so many things that we've talked about. For example, the polyphenols, the colors in fruits and vegetables inhibit this current virus from binding onto the ACE2 receptor. Sorry for getting geeky. But the way the virus gets inside your cells is that there's a catcher's mitt sitting on the outside of the cell called um, an ACE2 receptor facing the bloodstream. And this virus goes into that ACE2 receptor that opens the door and lets it go inside the cell. When you have high levels of polyphenols in your bloodstream, it inhibits the virus from getting into the ACE2 receptors because the ACE2 receptors are full of the polyphenols from the fruits and vegetables that you're eating. That's why the colors of the rainbow are so important in your diet every meal, every day. It's a base hit. Every meal is a base hit to help to protect you. Then if the virus gets inside your cell, a number of studies have shown the higher your zinc level intracellularly inside your, your cell, the higher the zinc level, the less the virus can shed. So you want to make sure that you have enough zinc in your diet and perhaps even supplement during this time of viral exposure. Take a little extra zinc. Uh, 20 to 30 milligrams a day is safe for everybody. Um, some doctors recommend more. That's okay, but you need to be monitored if you're doing more. But 20 to 30 milligrams a day is fine. But zinc is hard to get inside the cell. So there are things called uh, there are zinc escorters. They escort the zinc inside the cell. They're called ionophores, zinc ionophores. And um, Quercetin is a zinc ionophore. So during this time of viral threat, I encourage a lot of people to take a little extra quercetin and a little extra zinc. Not going to kill viruses, but it's going to help protect you maybe this much so that you don't, if you get an exposure, you don't have a severe reaction. So quercetin is a zinc ionophore. Another zinc ionophore it, this is a cute story, but it, it, it's very true. When the British um, were in India in the 1800s, malaria was a big problem and still is a problem there, but um, British soldiers were getting sick and they learned that the locals 
We're taking this, uh, the bark from this tree, making a tea out of it and drinking it. And it's called the fever tree. And what the bark contains, they later, later identified, is quinine. So when you take quinine, it helps, it's a very powerful zonophore to get zinc inside the cell, which helped with malaria. So it certainly was, that's interesting. And so the British soldiers were given quinine, but it tastes really bitter. I mean, it's just the most terrible tasting stuff. So what did they do? They made this little tonic of fruit, what, fruit flavored water and quinine and they added a little sugar to it. That's where the song came from. Just a little bit of sugar helps the medicine go down. It was from the quinine, which tasted so bitter, they put sugar in a little bit of fruit water and mixed it with the quinine. Thus was born tonic water. And of course, the British soldiers got permission for a teaspoon of gin. Here comes the gin and tonic. That's where it came from, was to fight malaria, to prevent malaria. So uh, that's what tonic water is. And unfortunately, most of the commercial tonic waters now are loaded with sugar, just loaded. They're not uh, healthy to drink at all, but the company called Fever Tree from the uh, uh, Quinchona tree, the Fever Tree of India, a company, they make five different types of tonic water one of the tonic waters is called India Light, and it has less than half the sugar of the other tonic waters. So Marzi and I split a bottle of India Light tonic water every day we, with ice and uh, a slice of lime in there, and we diluted half and half with water. And so we're drinking a little tonic water every day because it's flavorful, a little bit of um, uh, lime or lemon in it. And it's a zinc ionophore, and we're taking zinc, so it helps to get the zinc inside the cell so that if a virus does get inside the cell for us, we have enough zinc there to inhibit it from shedding very much. So that's the logic behind all of that, uh, to have a little tonic water every day, but light, low sugar tonic water, have a little zinc every day, have a little quercetin every day, it's a, another zinc ionophore uh, that may help uh, and because I don't know that you really can detox these viruses, but this is something you can do that may help. <clears throat> you know, one thing I do is I have a Rife device. So I can do a scan of my body and see what any kind of infections I have, uh, you know, parasites, pri brain prions, viruses, any type of infection. It'll scan my body for those and then send a frequency, which is like the opposite frequency of that infection, and literally destroy the cell membrane of that infection. Because everything has a frequency that can be measured. And so, uh, so that's what I use for any type of, of illness or virus or what have you. You know, I'm going to maybe make Wendy a little uncomfortable here, and not intentionally, but I may. <laughs> but for all of our attendees here, look at this woman. Look at her eyes. Look at the clarity in her eyes. Look at the radiance from her skin. I mean, she's a beautiful woman, uh, but it's not makeup that does this. You know, she probably put a little something on for this, you know, to be on camera, of course. But if you look below the makeup, you see the radiance. So because she was not well, she started to dial down, how do I do this? And then she learned about this, and then she learned about this, and then she learned about this, and she learned about this. And it's a step-by-step -step process. Base hits win the ball game. So for everyone here, I hope you pick up a couple pearls here today that you um, can try and see. Um, learning about heart rate variability, it's a, maybe one of the most powerful biomarkers that you have to tell if, is what I'm doing working or not. But when you learn about biomarkers, um, when you learn about heart rate variability, and maybe you get an aura ring, um, uh, if you go to heartmath.com, I think that's their website, heartmath, M-A-T-H, and just learn a little more about heart rate variability, and they've got some tools there for you. Uh, and that may be a very powerful tool. It may take you a month to learn about this, you know, 
spending 15 minutes a day or so on it, you know, you'll learn a little more and a little more. And then you'll play with it and say, oh, yeah, I see the difference. When I do this, my heart rate is doing this. And when I do that, my heart rate responds this way. So you can start to monitor your body on a much more sensitive level. And uh, I think that's a takeaway message. I'm going to encourage everyone today uh, from this interview with Wendy is that she has been monitoring herself. And she talks about it very casually, right? But it was hours and hours and hours. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time on my health. I mean, I'm 50. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be 50 in a few months, and um, but yeah, I five, but I, you. I five they, you. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but I you know I do work very hard on my health, and I, the information I have is definitely hard won. But you know it's worth it to to spend that time because if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. You really if you do, you lose your health, you're spending every uh, all your time and money trying to regain it. You yeah, know, yeah. so it's worth it to preempt that. Uh, before that happens and you know for me bioenergetics and focusing on that has been a huge key because uh, not only does that dictate our physical health it's also where all of our emotions and our emotional trauma resides as well and there's ways that I have a new emotional detox program coming out to to teach people how to tune negative emotions out of their field because that's a huge energy drain and it's responsible for 65% of physical health issues, these emotional traumas. So, so for me, it's just uh, my, secret, my secret sauce, so to speak. We, we, will <laughs> let, we will let everyone know when that's available. We'll send out announcements to make sure everybody knows about that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Wendy, thank you so very much for being here today. It's really a pleasure to hang out with you. And, and uh, 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 this information is extremely valuable. Uh, just thank, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, of course. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.